perché il Mediterraneo non sia il carcere che umilia il nostro vigore di vita. Il... Can you recognize the face of fascism? Democracy is dying. This claim cuts against the grain of some deeply held Canadian beliefs. But the evidence is incontrovertible. In the hearth of democracy, fascism has gone mainstream. From Trumpism to the success of Europe's anti-immigration parties or growing Canadian youth skepticism concerning the efficacy of government institutions, the signs of democratic decline are everywhere. Why is democracy in decline? It's an important question, but also a misleading one. Contrary to the assumption of many liberal Canadians, democracy does not have much of a track record. Its historical record demonstrates little success. Have you forgotten the 1930s? History never provides us with perfect analogies. It's difficult to ignore the parallels between today and the devil's decade. During the Great Depression, Western democracies fell one by one. By 1939, fascism triumphed over most of the world. Constitutions were gutted or suspended. Authoritarianism carved back the rule of law. Politics was waged through violence on blood-washed streets. Liberal post-war historians belittled fascist thinkers for being unsophisticated opportunists that lacked a clear political philosophy. They described fascism as irrational. Hitler seduced the masses. And the global fascist movement was nothing more than an aberration spewing from an unprecedented economic collapse. That assessment is dangerously wrong. In the only real face-off between democracy and fascism, fascism won. Hands down, it wasn't even close. By 1940, only Britain and the United States could be judged as world powers with functioning democratic systems. And they were shameless appeasers rather than paragons of liberal virtue or international humanitarianism. Throughout the 1930s, they consistently bowed to popular pressure, appeased the fascist states, even collaborated in the demise of their allies, and repeatedly turned a blind eye towards genocide. History shows that fascism works. According to fascist philosophers, the liberals got it all wrong. Humanity is not governed by reason or moral scruples. Humans don't hunger for knowledge. They are creatures of emotion. Conscious of our own depth, the human animal thirsts most of all for security. Guided by this dark insight, Fascist politicians, both yesterday and today, cultivate fear. Once someone is afraid, their rational brain shuts off. When survival is believed to be at stake, even bold-faced lies can become credible. Fear is a powerful weapon in the hands of an unscrupulous politician. Convincing the masses of their persecution rouses in them an indignant anger. Believing themselves under attack, they can with frightening ease turn against their neighbors. Canadians might disagree with fascist cynicism, but it's more difficult to argue against demagoguery's history of success. Plato didn't split hairs. Democracy equals mob rule. America's founding fathers were similarly skeptical of the unwashed masses. They built multiple safeguards into their constitutional system of republicanism to prevent despotism. Only in the golden post-war recovery after World War II and the economy grew at least 5% per annum did democracy really work. 
democracy, it seems, is an effective system for distributing windfall during times of plenty. But what happens when the global economy turns sour and outsources blue-collar jobs? When ordinary workers can no longer punch their golden ticket to the middle class? Demagoguery works because fascists deliver something that liberals cannot. The insecurity of the masses is relieved by placing their faith in their leader. His strength can tame a world they do not understand and cannot control. Fascism also owes a debt to religion. Fascist pageantry preaches transcendence from a broken world and privileged access to a higher truth. The Nazis' famed Nuremberg rally was not just a spectacle. It was a stage-crafted ritual that appealed to all the senses to bring its participants into a liminal state of consciousness where they could absorb a deeper sense of purpose. Germany awake. Fascism is a complicated phenomenon. In History 2351, we will explore fascism through many lenses. This is a unique interdisciplinary course. It is focused on excavating the 1930s, not only its fiendish events, but the twisted geography of its subconsciousness. Contemporaries saw the 1930s as the devil's decade. Satan was running amok amongst them. Evil was washing over the world and mangling it beyond recognition. In surveying the 1930s, we will explore the Dust Bowl, Ukraine's Holodomor, the Spanish Civil War, the Nanking Massacre, the rise of Hitler and Mussolini's brash populism. We will also use novels and film as historical text to bore into the contemporary psychology. What fears haunted their consciousness and animated such infamous behavior? What turned ordinary men into monsters and led good men to remain silent? We will explore the 1930s by asking some big questions. How the ghosts of Europe's trenches live on in post-war art? Was Frank and Delano Roosevelt a dictator? Why did modern art so rankle conservatives? How did civil society in Spain disintegrate? How could so many of Japan's soldiers brutalize civilians in Nanking? How did Mussolini invent modern politics? Why were Nazi rituals so effective at building consent for radical policies most Germans would not support? How did the Great Depression seed radical politics around the globe and across the political spectrum? Why did the democratic powers fail to contain bandit states. Now what does the psychology of fascism reveal about humanity? At the end of this journey, matriculating students will acquire new insight into a crevice of the Canadian memory, the decades separating the two world wars, the critical glue that actually ties these two traumatic events together.